Hello and welcome to another Wilderness Tamed video with me, John Grundy. In this one, we're doing some dredging and edging of my own three ponds in my garden. Just taking away masses of vegetation from the edges and the margins and uh, creating some open water. <laughs> So first up we're going to use the scythe to clear around the margins of the pond and this allows us to see where the edge of the vegetation is and how much we need to remove to get back to the original pond boundaries. So I'm being very mindful of what I'm doing with the scythe, considering this is a lined pond. Don't want to puncture the liner, that would be silly. So I'm keeping the point of the blade fairly upright, rather than jabbing it down towards the bottom of the pond or in towards the sides of the pond. It's a good exercise in mindfulness, just constantly being aware of, of what I'm doing, exactly where I'm positioning the scythe. So this is a mat of lesser spearwood Ranunculus flammula. Uh, it's rooted right down into the base of the pond, so there's a lot of uh, silt from the bottom of the pond coming up with this lot. So it's going to get left there on the side for most of the day, just to allow any invertebrates the chance to get back into the water. There's also a lot of pond snails in here. And when I'm using the rake, you'll notice the tines are pointed upwards essentially using it like a rigid net. So I'm just removing the floating debris and some of the leaf litter from the bottom of the pond.
So this is where it gets interesting. I'm reaching underneath this overhanging mat of vegetation to feel where the liner is and then using the little serrated saw to cut through the roots in order to remove this. And you'll see once it comes off, it's actually encroached about 15, 20 centimeters in. So I've lost a fair bit of surface area of the pond. Now I'm not concerned that there's gonna be any wildlife in that because it's such a dense mat of root it would be nigh on impossible, certainly for any amphibians to get in there. So you can see how I reach underneath each time. And I can feel with my fingertips exactly where the pond liner is. Getting a little bit further in, just aware of how much this stuff is overhanging. This is uh, relatively easy stuff to cut through because it's predominantly grasses, moss, and a few attractive marginals. I think I'm probably sacrificing some ragged robin and devil's bit scabious in amongst this lot. So when I get to the top pond, the larger pond, and I'm going through the roots of some carex and it's really tough. This is a nice mild October day, so the water is actually pleasant to work in. Well, it's certainly better than being frozen. Seeing how much the vegetation has encroached on all of these ponds um, made me think about the process of succession. Uh, I once heard quite a while ago, and it made a lot of sense, that if a pond is left to its own devices, it will eventually turn into oak woodland. And I think that's a subject for an, an entirely different video but uh, you can kind of see the starts of the succession process in this encroaching vegetation. I think it's been about five years since this was last done around this pond.
Wowzers muck trousers. It's quite the difference. So this is my original pond. It's been in now as long as I've been in the house, uh, which is 26 years. And it's right underneath the pine tree. So there's a lot of needle fall into this, which acidifies the water. And this is the one pond that the great crested newts no longer breed in. They're, uh, they're not fond of acidic water, apparently. Uh, which I believe is the reason that you don't find great crested newts in Cornwall because all their water is a bit acidic. That's what I've been told anyway by a respected herpetologist and I'm not about to doubt their word. So this hasn't been dredged or edged in about, dare I say it's over 10 years. So a fair amount of neglect, to be honest. Uh, but this is the pond where I did some of the pond expert, pond vacuum uh, demonstration work in. So it's got slightly less silt in the bottom than it would have done a few months ago. But it's just, we've had a bit of a strong wind the last few days and uh, hence it's, the pine trees shed a lot of needles into this. But also I need to rediscover the edges. Just cutting through the leaf stems of the native water lily, Nymphaea alba, and on the other side of the bridge here, the flowering rush, Butomus umbellatus. Hello. It's at this point I discover some rock work around the edge of the pond that I hadn't seen for about 15 years and I'd completely forgot about. Discovering stones with a serrated blade, not great, at least not for the serrated blade. We're on the opposite. 
<laughs> Cut. We're on the opposite side of the pond, under the shade of the pine tree now, and uh, cutting away a large chunk of Caltha palustris, a marsh marigold. It's been a long time since I purposefully put stonework around the edge of a pond. The only disadvantage with removing plant matter and uh, debris from around the edge of a pond is you do occasionally uncover some liner, which you then have to try and recover. So here I'm using a bit of spare stone and I think I rip up a clump of uh, marsh marigold and stick that in as well. So now we're on to the larger pond and this is the Carex. It's Carex Cornuta, I think it is. This sort of black flower, very slender leaved thing. It's quite attractive, but by golly, it doesn't off take over. Um, yeah, and it's super dense roots. As you can see, I'm having a bit of a job getting through it all. So I kind of carve it off in blocks. Again, I'm always being very mindful of exactly where the pond liner is and how deep I can cut in with this very jagged serrated blade. So I really don't want to go through the liner. Because I'm a complete idiot and I thought I was recording the scything and dredging of this pond. I wasn't, so I've missed out all of that. So you just have to trust me that it was epic. Took out a load of broadleaf pondweed, which is a deep water rooting plant, spreads like wildfire, but it sends up long stems and the leaves sit flat on the surface a bit in the way that a, a water lily does um, and there was just thick mats of it so dredging that out has actually brought a load of silt out as well which cleared the pond down to, I could feel the liner uh, below my hands where I was working uh, it's a real shame because it looked pretty impressive This is slow progress cutting through this stuff and uh, the result was 
the following day, well, for about the following three days, a really sore triceps. It's like an incredible tricep workout, just constantly soaring uh, through roots. So I'd recommend it if you want to uh, top up your triceps. Look at the state of that lot. It's ridiculous. It just shows that if you um, do things more regularly than I do, it's one of those things where you, you look at it every year and you think, oh yeah, I must get around to doing that. And you just don't. And uh, the next year you do the same and you just don't. You say, yeah, yeah, I'll do that. Let's wait for the right day. The right day never comes along if you wait for it. You've just got to get on and do it. And the result is, having left it so long, I'll give myself a right bitch of a job to do. But uh, it's my own stupid fault. give you a close-up of what I've been removing. Look at that lot. Dense. I've only gone up the one side of this pond. I'm gonna treat myself and save the other side for next year. Woohoo! Well, that's it. Three ponds done in a day. Been quite, uh, quite the effort to get it done, but worth doing. I've quite enjoyed myself. It's been a lovely day to work in. And uh, see a little bit of patching in there. Yeah, all good. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks very much for watching and persevering right through. Quite a long video, I realise, but uh, been quite nice. And what a transformation. Get out there, get your own done, or give me a call and I'll come and do yours. Mm -hmm.